My name is Tyler Winklevoss. I am the CEO and co-founder of Gemini. Hi, I'm Cameron Winklevoss. I'm the president and co-founder of Gemini, and Tyler was kind enough to hire me a few years ago. Gemini is a crypto exchange and custodian, but really it's a platform building a bridge to the future of money. And our mission really is to empower the individual through crypto. And so we wanted to make it uh, simple and easy and reliable for people to engage in this magical new frontier. And a lot of this was informed by our own experience early on. We bought a lot of crypto on Mt. Gox, which famously imploded. It was a very scary proposition. And we thought for this to go mainstream, for this technology revolution to really happen, we have to build reliable, safe, trusted infrastructure. So that led us to um, starting Gemini. And it started with, a, with building a bridge into the future of money and then into the future of DeFi or decentralized finance. And more recently, a bridge into the future of art. My parents aren't art collectors, so there's not like all this art on the walls. You know, our artistic exposure was probably through film, going to museums, uh, stuff we learned in school, but it's not a classically like art collecting type experience. There's obviously a lot of business, math, science, because our dad's actually an entrepreneur. And we joke that we grew up in a startup. So a lot of the things that come natural to us, like this risk taking and, and thinking really big, um, comes very natural because we saw that example firsthand and we grew up in it. We grew up hanging out at his company, talking to engineers and actually reading magazines like Forbes um, with a lot of our idols like Bill Gates and Steve Jobs on it. A lot of our experience was like a lot of other kids growing up collecting baseball cards, comic books. So the collectivity of creative things was there and that really informed our, our journey with, with Nifty Gateway and NFTs. In terms of a, a fine artist in the offline or meat space world, um, I've been really fascinated by Kusama's works, especially the earlier nets, but um, we're very early in our learning process of the fine art world. So I, I think we're, we're news, but I think that's also because we're beginners, that's an advantage of how we, we aren't encumbered by the assumptions of the old work, the legacy art world. So when we're looking at things like Nifty Gate, we say, why not? I find, you know, the, the classic blue chips like Warhol in the, the modern art world uh, really pleasing. Um, and I also find Kusama and her story, quite frankly, is really fascinating. She was uh, a female artist in New York during the 60s and really wasn't taken seriously for for many, many years, if not decades in her career. And she had to overcome a lot, including mental health and the fact that she was a female artist in a very do male dominant world. And uh, so I find her work really compelling. It's kind of a lot in line also with the story of crypto and Bitcoin. It's such an underdog story. I think uh, very few people, well, most people write it off or wrote it off when they first saw it. And very few people were believers who actually imagine where this could go. So I think there's there's a lot of parallels there to the story of Bitcoin, the story of crypto, and even the story of NFTs. What we identify with is this idea that you're crazy and, and nobody really, you know, it's the that quote that people often attribute to Gandhi. First they ignore you, then they laugh at you, then they fight you, then you win. And quite frankly, we've been crazy a lot uh, in, in the past, you know, two decades or so. Um, and and so I think we identify with that frontierism, like being really far out there, where it's sort of this secret hiding in in plain sight, if you will. Mm -hmm. And and I think um, the challenges we've taken up in our lives, everybody has to be an underdog. If you're trying to climb Mount Everest, there's no such thing as an overdog and rowing and trying to make the Olympics, everybody's an underdog. Uh, Bitcoin was the ultimate underdog uh, story in crypto. So I think we, we take on these challenges where often we do identify with the underdog because of what it takes to succeed and the very low probability of success and the amount of conviction and perseverance necessary to actually you know, get there. So space is the ultimate 
frontier. Um, and I think what makes a good astronaut is, is perseverance and conviction and a lot of the values that we value as a team at Gemini. And uh, we actually call our employees astronauts. We're all astronauts. Um, building on the frontier of money and the frontier of art and the frontier of finance. So we really wanted to sort of channel uh, our values and that idea. And we refer to the office as the, as the Gemini spaceship. Space has been a huge motif for crypto. Um, uh, to the moon, right, is, is a famous meme. And like Cameron said, we feel like we're on a spaceship um, exploring a new frontier like space. So we call this a Gemini spaceship. We want it to feel like that. We took inspiration from a lot of different things, but um, we have a storybook from Space Odyssey 2001, the famous movie. Um, so we're just trying to evoke that feeling of, hey, we're on the frontier, we're explorers. This, when you step into this office, like it, it, it's a mentality. Yeah, and we believe in frontiers and we like them because we think that's where greater choice, independence and opportunity exist. NFTs are non-fungible tokens that are one of a kind, um, very similar to your baseball cards. There's only so many printed, but the scarcity of them, the, what enforces the fact that it's one of a kind is the cryptography and the math of the blockchain, the same math and technology that enforces there will only be 21 million Bitcoin created. So when an artist mints an NFT and creates only one of them, or 10 of them, that's enforced by the same blockchain technology and cryptocurrency that enforces that there will only be so many Bitcoin. Bitcoin created this concept of digital scarcity uh, of ones and zeros, where you could make something precious or scarce like gold. There's only so much Bitcoin, it's actually fixed, which is a crazy concept because ones and zeros are absolutely plentiful. Bitcoin solved that problem. You can take that to stocks, you can take that to other assets, you can ultimately take it to art. And what makes a Hank Aaron or a Babe Ruth card interesting is there's not that many of them. Art should be digital. Um, we think that NFTs solve the digital scarcity problem. And quite frankly, as we move more and more closer to the metaverse, you'll want art in your online world. And I think that people already play a lot of video games where they're buying goods and services inside the games, but they can't really take them out of that walled garden universe. And we think that NFTs are really exciting because they allow you to basically take art and collect it and move it around uh, the metaverse. The metaverse is basically an online, the recreation of the offline world in the online setting. I think a good example of the metaverse would be Fortnite, where kids basically sign in, or even adults really, uh, people have signed in and they even have held electronic music concerts. I think Marshmallow hosted a, a concert in, the meta, in, in Fortnite. People signed in to go see him play in this virtual world. Um, not in an offline setting or a comp concert venue. Um, and so that's, that's sort of one example of a metaverse, but it is a closed you know, world currently. And we think in the future, those worlds open up. Collecting art is a core human behavior. Um, it's very, very core to our being. And so having art that moves in the metaverse, um, similar to how Bitcoin is money that moves through the internet, makes a lot of sense to us. We let our curiosity drive us and sort of lead us. So we follow our curiosity, we follow our passion. So we were curious about Bitcoin, we learned, became passionate about it. Then we saw Ethereum and other cryptocurrencies. We learned about NFTs and we just, um, we let ourselves go and explore with a really open mind. One of Gemini's values is beginner's mind. We always wanna be beginners and not bring our previous assumptions. We were not financial experts when we came to Bitcoin, and that was an asset because we saw the possibilities. And the same thing um, when we saw Ethereum and other cryptocurrencies and, and NFTs, uh, the beginner's mind has served us uh, very well and allows us, gives us the freedom to imagine what could be not always looking in the past. We really like our current mission and journey, and we feel like it has this really unique opportunity to do well and do good. And we really believe in the, in the promise of crypto 
and the empowerment of the individual and really the greater choice, independence and opportunity we think it can bring. So we're super excited about the current mission. Um, yeah, I don't think I'd change anything. I think we'd be busy right now figuring out how to disrupt ourselves because the idea of a centralized social network is just not gonna exist five or 10 years in the future. So um, we're glad to be building in the decentralized frontier of crypto as opposed to trying to change our stripes and get into it now.